After the August 13th meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, would the municipal clerk call the roll, please? Chairman Swift Kayata? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Council Carson? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor Lynch? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. And Councilor Roberts? Here. Manager McGovern? Here. Municipal clerk? Present. Present. Okay. Great Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we start with the um, regular agenda, we have some presentations to make. It's my great pleasure to do so, and I'll move down to the podium. It's um, one of the great pleasures of the council chairman to be able to thank citizens who have contributed so much to the town of Cape Elizabeth. And we are making several presentations this evening to people who have been uh, heads of various committees or boards in the town. Cape Elizabeth depends greatly on the willingness of its citizens to contribute to the life of the town and to the work that the town does, and we appreciate their efforts very, very much. These plaques are just a small token of our appreciation. I would like to thank um, Virginia Hansen and Marsha Wiggins, who both have served as vice chairman of the Cape Elizabeth Arts Commission through the year 2000. And I have, for, if you dismount, please. I have a plaque here for both of you. This is presented as a lasting symbol of our appreciation of your most valuable contributions to the town of Cape Elizabeth. You have an admirer down here. He's one of her contributions. He's, yes, one of her most important contributions. Virginia Hansen. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a couple more plaques here. Um, I would like to ask uh, Gil Jordan to come up, please. Gil Jordan, um, first, I'd like to thank you very much for the work you've done. This plaque is presenting as, presented as a lasting symbol of our appreciation of your valuable contributions to the town of Cape Elizabeth as chairman of the Facilities 2000 Building Committee. Thank you very much. Oh, yay, yay, yay. We have one other thing tonight. Um, this one, I've got a few notes here because it's a, a, length, a more lengthy tribute. Tonight it is my honor to present the Ralph T. Gould Award for 2001. This award, established in 1986, was named for the late Ralph Gould to recognize his community service and subsequently to recognize those who provide community service in the same spirit as Ralph Gould. Tonight we add someone who has given service to the town of Cape Elizabeth in many capacities. The 15th recipient of the Ralph T. Gould Award is Gilbert S. Jordan. Gilly Jordan is one of those citizens who step forward whenever there is a need. He was one of the founders of the Cape Elizabeth Rescue Unit he has been a volunteer with the Cape Fire Department for over 38 years. <coughs> Pretty impressive. <laughs> he served as captain of Engine One Company. He's also served on many truck committees, most notably the committee for the current ladder truck used by the fire department. <laughs> Gilly was also the chairman of the Facilities 2000 Committee, as we just noted, overseeing the planning of the new public works garage and other improvements at the Gullcrest property. As head of this committee, he also guided the committee to decisions to renovate the former public works garage into a new fire station and to construct a new police station. 
He has recently also taken on the responsibility of chairing the Community Center Study Committee. In addition to these quite public efforts, Gilly has also very quietly helped with the planting of flowers at the town hall and at the public safety building over the years. He has not only donated the flowers each year, but has also planted them with the help of his wife, Barbara. Gilbert Jordan is a person who dreams of what can be accomplished and who then sets out to see the dreams become reality. He truly has acted in the same spirit as Ralph Gould in placing Cape Elizabeth at the forefront of his priorities. On behalf of the entire town council and all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, it gives me great pleasure to present to Gilbert Jordan the year 2001 Ralph Gould Award. All right, we'll move back to the regular agenda. Oh, I should also mention we have some other awards that uh, the people who were receiving them could not be here this evening, and we will be forwarding them to them, other chairmen of, uh, former chairman of various committees around town. So reports and correspondence. Henry, Councillor Barry. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I had just three items I wanted to mention. Uh, one, um, it's the Conservation Commission. I, I think many of the people have seen uh, the item in the uh, newspaper about the loose strife uh, phenomenon, which is a plant which uh, uh, eats, it, uh, pre prevents other plants from uh, filling, uh, filling in. And uh, they have developed these beetles who eat the loose stripe so that the other plants will have a chance to grow, as it's explained to me. And Nancy Irving from the uh, Commission uh, for uh, Conservation, the Conservation Commission, uh, went down and got nine plants down the coast here of these beetles and put them around uh, Cape Elizabeth to uh, uh, participate in this uh, activity of the Conservation Commission. And I think she should be uh, uh, commended for that, and uh, I guess that's uh, working on this loose strife uh, problem. Number two, <clears throat> at the last meeting, uh, Council McGinty and I were uh, to meet with the treasurer of Cumberland County, and we did meet with her, uh, and we, we discussed uh, some of the problems that exist at the county level. <coughs> uh, principally, they've shoved her upstairs in the courthouse in an uh, office uh, separated from where she had been for 15 years. And uh, it seemed to be the, our, our uh, decision, uh, legislation is needed to uh, give authority to the Cumberland County Budget Committee. It's now a budget advisory committee, and the three county commissioners are free to ignore any uh, recommendations made by that committee. And uh, the uh, York County, and I believe Franklin County uh, up in Farmington are two counties, and perhaps there are more, who by statute uh, have the authority in their budget committees at the county level to uh, approve the budget or veto the budget. They have some say in uh, how their finances are going to be handled. And the county commissioners have to deal with the budget committee. That's not so in Cumberland County. This is one of the thoughts that we thought might be uh, of help to our legislative delegation from this county in uh, promoting legislation which would correct that situation. Um, finally, uh, everybody did such a wonderful job on the beach to beacon race this year. Um, I happen to be playing the piano near the finish line and I'd like to uh, commend uh, Jim Champy who set up all of the, uh, the, the speakers, the amplifiers and uh, all the things for the uh, announcements and did a very good job, along with the police and everybody else who worked so hard on it to make that uh, race a, a big success. So that's what I had to submit for report. Thank you very much. Okay. He, he was an inspiration to all, I guess I was a designated runner from the town council. 
Henry was an inspiration to us all at the, uh, the finish line. He made me very um, proud. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, it was. It was. Uh, it's always great to run through the town of Cape Elizabeth, and the people are really enthusiastic, and it gives you a lot of encouragement to keep going. Right. And uh, a lot of, I guess, the more people finish this race than ever before, as I believe they announced. Including so it was, uh, it was a great race. Town assessor Matt. Uh, That's right, Matt. Uh, yeah. Ran also, and his wife. Well, I would also like to congratulate Councillor McGinty, who ran the entire race. And right. I saw him out there and at mile five, and he looked pretty fresh, so I was impressed. <laughs> Didn't feel very fresh. <laughs> <laughs> on, on that, it was, the most, it was probably the most number of people that ever finished a road race in the state of Maine, mm. and it was probably the most number of people that ever finished a road race from a single community in the state of Maine, wow. with the 390 from Cape Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. It's very impressive, uh, and so is the work of everyone from the Public Works Department, the Fire Department, the right. Police Department, er, all the municipal employees, and all the volunteers from the town. Uh, Councilor Roberts. Thank you. I'd just like to mention that uh, how saddened I was to see the good table go down in flames uh, a few weeks ago. That was my regular Saturday morning haunt, and I, I feel somewhat like a refugee now when I go elsewhere on Saturday morning. And I want to wish Tony well in getting that back up and going, and hopefully be bigger and better than ever. I want to follow up on what Henry also said on the Conservation Commission's effort on the purple loose strife. Uh, it is an invasive plant that we do need to control. It uh, can wipe out the habitat for a lot of uh, wildlife, particularly the, the ducks and other critters like that. And I've noticed going down uh, Route 77 that people have even actually wound up planting the stuff. And I would encourage people to be cautious about what they're planting. If they have it in, please pull it out. And if you see it on the roadside and you have a moment, uh, help the Conservation Commission even pull it out on that. And again, I would thank everybody for their efforts on the beach to beacon. Uh, and I won't go any further. The kudos have already gone around pretty well, I guess. But thank you. Any other? reports. I would also like to just take this opportunity um, to note uh, for, for all our citizens um, and to our thank you going out to Peter Lachance of Lachance Brick Company, to Everett Johnson of EF Johnson Associates, and to Jim Rowe of the Charles S. Chase Company. They all made uh, very generous contributions uh, for the new dugouts at Holman Field and at Capano Field, and we appreciate their civic-mindedness and their contributions very much, so thank you. Okay, the ma town manager's report. Yeah, I had just one brief item, and then I was going to ask Deborah to give an, give an update. I see Jay Shermer, our library director, in the audience, and for those of you that aren't aware, Jay is the president of the Maine Library Association. <coughs> they were recently honored by the Maine Civil Liberties Union. Did I get the right group? for uh, their courageous uh, positions on access to within the library to the internet and other facilities and you know it's very unusual for uh, you know a, a group like the library association to receive such award and i think jay's leadership uh, had an awful lot to do with that working with other librarians throughout the state so i'd like to congratulate jay and the main library association on that award also uh, debbie uh, deborah lane our town clerk uh, has been working on establishing uh, the rapid renewal program now of excise tax for six months or a year. You might recall that Dan Gwodowski, the main Secretary of State, was here last month about that, and uh, Debbie is going to give an update on uh, how that's going. Thank you very much. As of the posting of this morning, which would have been transactions through yesterday, uh, 59 transactions have been completed, and again, this is as of July 9th when it was publicized, when Secretary Godowski gave the report, there are a few, I think seven maybe, that were under the um, pilot program, the testing that we did a week or two before that. So this is essentially since July 9th. Um, out of those 59 transactions, not surprising, 50 were done by credit card and nine were done by electronic check. Mm -hmm. um, 15 transactions were done over the weekend. What? At least six people have done multiple transactions. We know that several folks have done, I think it's two, I'm not sure anybody that's done more than, than two, but six folks have done at least two vehicles. So I guess they had success the first time and went on. In terms of the revenue that we talked about last time, the loss of the revenue, if you recall, if someone does do a transaction by a, 
credit card, we do um, have to pay that fee to the credit card company. And that's taken off the top of the excise. If one does it by electronic check, um, actually inform me, um, I think they said, what, six cents a check or something, so there's nothing taken off the top. So in terms of a loss of excise tax that we had, it was $176.52. And then if you recall also the uh, re-registration fee, $3 fee that we usually get, we would lose that as well. And when in fact our residents actually would pay a $2 registration fee, and that is a fee that goes directly to inform me. And out of that we lost $177. So if you look at the loss, it's $353.52, and we actually received in excise revenue from these 59 transactions, $9,426.62. So, as I say, it's not surprising that more folks are taking advantage of a credit card. We are very pleased with the numbers um, so far of those folks that are taking advantage um, of this program. There is, if you do an average, it's 2.18 transactions per day. Um, we had a, three days that five transactions were done, a couple days of four, one of six. So, as more time goes on, we anticipate that folks will be taken. Uh, taking advantage of this program. And the manager and I will be um, looking at other possible um, ways to use this type of uh, interaction with our citizens over the web for other services, and whether it be property taxes, whether it be parking tickets, whatever the case may be. We see other opportunities, but this certainly was um, a great start for us to get involved with Secretary Godosky and his program. And, I think our citizens really have embraced it. There is an opportunity when you go on the web that you can email to inform me with questions, comments, problems, or what have you that you may have. And um, we have heard of a couple of folks that were not able to complete a transaction. Actually, I was one of them. <laughs> and yeah, it was kind of interesting. I was doing my dad's vehicle, a classic vehicle that's been registered in this town since 1976. So of course, I was going to show him this wonderful way, my dad's laughing right now, I know, show him this wonderful way of technology, how we were going to do it. So I sat the computer and error, error, error. <laughs> and uh, tried several minutes later, error, error, error. So he appeared at town hall last Friday to re-register his vehicle. <laughs> what I'm told is, is that the site was down uh, because there is a time, I don't know how frequently it happens, that the state's, um, computer system is being updated or informees, and I guess I just happened to hit that. So my dad was not impressed, but dad, there are other 59 others that are impressed by it, so. But we will try it next time, so. In any event, if folks do have something that comes up error, please try layer. I am told that that is due to the system being updated, which I guess with computers and everything, that certainly stands to reason that that would happen once in a while, so. Great. On a whole, we are pleased. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd like to also take this moment just to thank you and your staff because I know how hard you've worked to make this work. This is a great convenience for the citizens and we have high hopes that it will continue to be even more and more successful as time goes on. Thank you. I'd also like to just take this moment before we go further to recognize Matt Sturgis, our town assessor, for putting together a very comprehensive 2001 commitment report, and this is not a report on committing us town councilors to anywhere, it is a report on um, our tax commitment and valuation statistics. Um, I presume this is available in the town hall, it's a public document, so anyone who wants to come look at it can. It's very informative, it's, it's reasonably technical, but it has a lot of good information in it, and I can see that Matt worked very hard on it. Pardon me? It's available at the library. It is also available at the library. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, anything else on the town manager's report? No? May I just, I missed an opportunity to make a. <laughs> so right ahead. Councilor um, Fritz. I'm just very pleased that we've gotten quite a few responses to the community garden mm. um, proposal. And we are going to be having a meeting on this Wednesday, the 15th, at 7 o'clock at the, um, uh, the community center, one at 1226 Shore Road, um, for people who are interested. Great. Thank you very much. Um, citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Anyone out there have anything? No? Okay. We have the minutes. 
of our previous meeting held July 9th. Madam Chair, Barry. I'd move that the minutes of uh, the July 9th meeting be approved as read. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Item number 27. It's a request of Suzanne Gabriel uh, having to do with the service, the sewer service area map. Uh, uh, Manager McGovern, would you yes, uh, to elucidate? The, recently, the sewer became available to the rear of the Gabriel property, uh, which is on Wells Road, the sewer being in, in the Cross Hill subdivision. Uh, when one looks at the comprehensive plan and the growth area map, it shows that most of R5 lot 41 is in the growth area. Uh, therefore, it would, it would appear to be an area permissible to sewer both under the comprehensive plan as well as uh, under the, uh, the, sewer sur the sewer provisions of the sewer ordinance. Uh, I did do a, a draft uh, uh, motion for the Council's consideration uh, based on the review of both the ordinance and the comprehensive plan and I would recommend that uh, the sewer service area map be extended to fully include uh, map R5, lot 40-1 and uh, Ms. Gabriel is here as well as John Mitchell who uh, has been working uh, with her on this project. And they could answer any detailed questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Councilor McGinty. Does this require a public hearing? To just do the map. <clears throat> yes. I move Carson. that we approve. I want to get this on the table. So, I move that we approve the request of Suzanne Gabriel to include map R05, lot 40-1, in the sewer service area map. A second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Move it along. Do we? Thank you. Do we have any discussion? Uh, it, it, Councilor uh, Barry. I thought I heard. Uh, Lot 41. It, it says 40 1. I just want to make sure it's accurately referred to. Okay. Uh, is, is that right? 40 1? Yeah. Okay. It's 40 right. 1. All right. We don't want it to go somewhere up the street. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Councillor Fritz. Hi. I'm just wondering if it's um, possible to ask a question of the applicant. Or, I mean, it's not really in. I'm, I, I'm wondering just how, how many. Um, you're thinking might have need access to the sewer then in your development? Could could we just ask that you come to the podium, please, just so people at home can can hear you? Thank you. This is Sue Gabriel. You're not in the development, are you? No, this isn't really a development. It's just I have a very odd shaped piece of land. I have like 15 acres, close to 15 acres on the piece, and. Um, uh, before I had owned land that went beyond into the cross hill so that there could possibly be access because I as it was before I had a very small piece on Wells Road and land that went way back into the woods so by um, doing this it just gives me access to the back but I don't plan on being a developer I, I have three kids in college and this is a you know being this adds value to the land and if I could just sell, and I wouldn't do a, I, as I, I guess I could do a cluster housing, but I'm not really interested in that. I just would, what I'd be interested in selling is a two acre lot and maybe an, another one five or 10 years down the road, but it's not, as long as I'm there, I don't really have any great huge plans. But I'd say one two acre lot at this point is all I'm really interested in but I didn't want why the most important thing was not to landlock you know by doing the one lot I didn't want to kind of close off the rest of the property and hopefully this would prevent that in the future thank you any further questions for Ms. Gabriel great I'll move the question Madam thank Chair. you let's move the question all in favor Seven, opposed, zero. It's unanimous, congratulations. Um, the next item is item number 28. Uh, it's a recommendation from the town manager to include all lots of, 
lots abutting Broad Cove Road and the business zone adjacent to the intersection of Broad Cove Road, it must be, and Ocean House Road in the sewer service area map. Mr. McGovern? Yeah, I'm passing out. It's, I think you had this map in your packet. It's just a slightly better version of it. it. The difference being that it shows all the wetlands on the map. It's something Maureen noted that the first map she had prepared didn't fully show all of the wetlands, and the, and the new map does. Uh, as you can see, it's very limited uh, where one can build in this area, and in fact, there are some some of these lots that are already built upon that have wetlands. That, for that reason, Maureen and I both feel it's important uh, that these areas have sewer service, particularly the business district uh, portion. You recall the council approved the sewer extension previously, uh, so the extension has already been approved. This is merely amending the map to include these areas that are that are blackened out as being in the business zone and being lots that abut the Broad Cove Road. It's it's not proposed that anyone connect to to the sewer. Uh, mandatory that's been done away with it. and it's also proposed in your draft motion that no home or use be able to be built new use unless they can show that they would have been able to build without the sewer if I said mm. that right uh, so therefore we're not in a position that just because the sewer goes in something is buildable when it otherwise wasn't uh, so nothing good. new will be buildable not no as a result parcel. of this okay. as a result of this right I don't understand. How can you say that in some place else in the town, this is not a buildable lot, and now we're going to put the sewer by your lot, and now it is buildable, but in, except in this place here, we're not going to let you build if it's... That's not what I'm saying. I, I, I guess I misunderstood the way... You... What I'm saying is just by virtue of putting the sewer in, nothing is allowed to become buildable that otherwise would not have been buildable. For example, and let's get to the heat, the, the heat of the, the meat of the issue here. Uh, there's, there may or may not be a subdivision coming in on Broad Cove Road proposed by the land currently owned by the church. It mm -hmm. might be sold to another party, and they may subdivide it. We don't know. Whoever owns that lot along the St. Bartholomew's property would need to show, if they wanted to subdivide that into lots, that it could be built by, by soils test. Uh, for poor septic systems. They would need to show that before we would allow them to get on to the sewer. And do we have other areas of town that that's? I mean, if you have an infill lot in Trundy Road, it's on sewer. You couldn't build on it before, cause, but now you can because it's on a sewer. It, 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 that is not the standard throughout, although the whole concept of the, the sewer facility plan that was right. completed in 1986 was that no action of putting in the sewer should render areas buildable that were not buildable beforehand, and that's in keeping with that same spirit. Mm -hmm. but, hmm. but doesn't that kind of violate the, the 10,000, 20,000 square foot lot minimum? Because we're saying with the, if you're on sewer, you can build with the 10,000, and if you're on... No, in, in the case of any new lots here, they'd need to be 80,000 square feet, because of, unless, unless it was a cluster uh, subdivision. It would, you know, the new lots need to be 80,000 square feet, so th those other rules wouldn't apply. <coughs> because this is, outside, those, this is outside the ground. Those ones were, were already carved up into That's 10 right. 20. They're like old lots, Previous, previously determined I lots. I, I can't see the wetlands here. Can you tell me where it is? Yeah, there are all these little green, green. dots in there. That comes from there. Oh, all right. The real concern is, as you can see, there's dry area along Broad Cove Road, and that's where those, where those lots are that, that the church may or may not be proposing. The concern is across the street, uh, over where the good table is and where uh, Cape Variety is, you have that little patch of wetland there right approximately where the septic systems are, which is indicative of a, of a sense that those septic systems probably aren't going to be uh, good functioning systems in the long run. How about the island in the middle of uh, the road here? Yeah, the island is where the Lions Club is. No, where no, no, the, the, the little island by the... Uh, yeah, they have it marked yeah. off. The traffic yeah. island, Mike. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the Wheeler Road. It goes around there. That is the Lions Club, that little yeah. antique place. No. 
No. Did yeah. I get the right spot? No. No. I was talking no. about they, they marked out the island. No, that's it. That's the, oh, you're talking about the ice cream stand. No. Island. Point to it, Henry. Excuse me. No, he's, he's pointing to the, yeah, to so the antique. And club and down. Yes, which that is the line. Yes. Yes. It just looks the weird there. But this, that's Route 77. Well, it's not really an island. It's, it's the Lions Club. Right. Okay, well, there, there is an island in the middle of the road. Yeah, that's not. Oh, okay. So here's the road here. Not on the map. It just looks so small. It, looks it like does, I guess, look that way, yeah. Uh, Councilor McGinty. I'm still not convinced that what, I don't know if Penny's still thinking, what I was thinking is that the rules to build yeah. on a sewer lot are different than the rules to build on a septic lot. Yeah. And that you're saying that this amendment won't have an impact on those lots. Is that what you're saying? It, I'm saying that no. by amending the sewer service area map, you're changing the map. But if folks wanted to come in and get a building permit on any of these lots for new, new residential construction under the draft motion, which you can ignore, it indicates that these lots first have to pass soils tests to indicate that they would have been able to build on those lots if they had not been a sewer. But that is different than the rest or other portions of the town. Uh, I, I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is are we, you know, we're treating these lots differently than we would treat other lots similarly situated in the sewer district. Yeah. There isn't a motion on this item yet, but if you look at what I'd written up, if you, if you don't agree with that provision, you simply don't include it as part of the motion. As, as I, I think it's academic anyway, because th th those lots uh, have already been tested. Uh, in my understanding, as they pass the soils test, so I, th I think that it's it's academic. You know, they're going to be buildable, regardless. So what you're saying with this draft motion is that even if they're in this, even if we voted. To amend the map so that they'd be in the sewered area, right. sewer, sewerable area, that they wouldn't be buildable, but going by the last line of this, they wouldn't be, no one could build on them unless they were buildable anyways, without the sewer. For, for new, for new, what did I write? If they pass the soils yeah. test. Any new residential lot. Right. So they have to pass all the laws that, and regulations that they have to pass now. Right. But it's just saying it can, this isn't big enough. can connect yeah. with sewer. And, and I do think it's academic because if you look at where any of these lots would go, they're it's in so the areas good. where it's uh, upland anyway. Could, soil should be. I don't, Councilor Carson. Well, I, 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 these are the questions I used to get answered. You see, when I was chair, by going to his office. Now I have to ask them in public. <laughs> if you look at the lot that has the Cape variety on it. Right. Okay. It has a bowl line, a rectangle all around it. What is the lot right behind it that's in front of Jordan's house? That would be the farm field in front of Ernie Jordan's house. Okay, so why doesn't that become a buildable lot now? Its status would not change as a result of this action, whether or not it's build buildable or not. That's the point. Its status does not change. I, I, I'm, I'm I in favor of this, so I don't care. What, but what I'm trying to figure out is are we... Are we changing our policy from what we already had. Mm. No, I don't believe so. And, you know, and if, you, if you feel uncomfortable... I'm not being fair to these people. Your position would be simply to amend the sewer service area map and to leave out the, some of the additional language that I suggested. I was just trying to avoid what I knew would, what's often I hear from the council, some councilors historically, is they want to make sure that the sewer is not an impetus to growth. And that's been you know, the, the emphasis of the town's sewering policy since uh, the mid-80s. I just want to make sure that we're treating these people the same as we're treating people on some other sewered road. That's all. I, I'm not convinced that you are because I don't think that condition is in there. Councilor Lynch? Um, I, I don't know whether it's in order at this point to talk about how it might be amended, uh, but I have the same concern as Councilor Carson and I think Councilor McGinty on this about creating dual sets of rules depending on where your lot is and and I'm not sure of the relevance of the soil test necessarily if you're on a sewer um, if you're in a sewered area so I, I would suggest that we delete that paragraph the last 
paragraph. The whole last paragraph the last from paragraph. sewer is available to And just adopt the new map. The, the whole paragraph of the last line. Can you just tell us the verbiage that you well, would like to delete? How many, lots? How many lots are we talking about? There, there are, several of them are business lots already. It's just we could we could do just the last line. That would also I think that also accomplishes it. I could support I that. No, whether the map is sufficiently clear. It looks like there's about 16 lots. Just, I just quickly counted them. We don't have any motion before us at the moment, so I mean we can discuss for a moment more if you would like. But I, I'm happy to make a motion. I just want to be sure, and I'm sure the manager would be sure that people are treated fair. I just want to be sure that everybody is treated the same. You know, and that's what I'm not quite can't get my hands around. You know, I, through the chairman to Councillor Carson. I think if you want to do that and you want to be sure that you're doing that, it would be best to delete the last sentence. Councilor McGinty. I would uh, make a motion that we uh, accept the draft motion um, with the deletion of the last sentence of the second paragraph. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? Could we have the manager perhaps read it so the public can hear what the motion would be? Sure. Or I, I, I can read it. The draft motion is the Cape, um, Cape Elizabeth, the Cape Elizabeth? Council. Cape Elizabeth hereby amends the, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Town thank you. Council. Hereby amends the sewerage service area map to include those lots shown in attachment A, which is the map we've been looking at, being lots at the westerly end of Broad Cove Road and lots in the adjacent business district on Ocean House Road. The sewer is available to all lots on the map. Any further extensions of the sewer needed in the public roadway in this area shall be at private expense unless the town council shall specifically vote otherwise. No lot is required to connect, period. Wait a minute. I did just think of something. Well, it's but I have time to, for I understand the reason for your sentence. Do you understand the reason for my sentence? I understand the reason for your sentence. Yeah, just so there's no secret, the reason for the, the sentence. <laughs> there's a possibility that the good table, if they reconstruct, might want the sewer extended down to their property. There's also a possibility that they might ask for some assistance through the town to help extend the sewer. This motion is drafted to so that Right now, there's no provision to extend it, but they could ask the council, and you'd, you would vote however you desired at that time. Oh, I actually was thinking of something else. <laughs> Councilor Carson? I have to think about it. That's why I wrote it the way I did, but I'm not sure what your question is. Now. So, who made that motion? I did. Councilor McGinty. And was it seconded? Penny seconded. 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 Councilor Carson. Do you, are you still motioning and seconding, Councilor Carson? <laughs> Or do you want to unsecond it? I don't know if I can unsecond. No, I'll second it. I'll keep the second. Any further discussion? Uh, we're adding the words after uh, Cape Elizabeth, the words town council. Yes. Well, I, I, I'm not sure. Carson. I am not sure now because I've known this manager for 22 years, and there's a very good reason for him to make this work for us, and I feel like I'm being counterproductive because I'm missing something here. So, um, Mr. McGovern, I'm not sure that I should take those words out now. Is, is there some downside that you see to not having those words there? No, I, I think it, it was academic anyway because all of these lots would pass the soils test, so. They would? For new residential lots, yeah. So you have no concerns about that last sentence being deleted? No, none at all. I have no concern at all. Church lots. Mm. What about That's, the church lots? The, the church lots, or the so-called, and you know, they still haven't proposed yet. We don't know what they're... I mean, it's all doing. wetland there. But, but Yeah, but they would be the section right along Broad Cove Road, and if you look at this wetland, I if know. you look at the wetland line, those are upland. So they, those all could pass the soils test. Anyway. Okay. The wetland is just the green dots. It's the green dots. And there's plenty of... If you look at, like, the rest of the Broad Cove lots, <laughs> how, how <clears throat> their depth... 
you know, if the church proposes lots of similar depth, they're obviously within the upland dry section. Okay. All right. Okay, we have a motion before us. It has been seconded. Any further discussion, questions? Let's move the question. All those in favor? Seven, opposed, zero. It's unanimous. Um, I would just note, just for housekeeping, that this item number 28 says September 13th, 2001 on it. It should say August. So, just so it's corrected for the records. Okay, next item. Item number 29, it's a request from Leland P. Murray to modify provisions for earth removal materials permits so they don't have to be annually renewed. Is, no, he's not, no, he's not he's here. Uh, was was the recommendation that this go to the ordinance committee? Yes, it is. I'll so move. A second. I second. thought it was, as I read, that it would go to the planning board. It's got to go to the planning board as well. because it's a But doesn't it go to the planning 19. board first? Before no. the... I'll amend my motion to send it to the planning board first. I'll amend my second to send it to the planning board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's been moved and seconded to refer this to the planning board. Any discussion? Councilor Robert. I just have a question to the manager. Mike, do you, is this the uh, pit on Sawyer Road or does this involve Fowler Road as well? This involves any area in town that anyone desires an earth uh, materials permit. But I think the main issue is probably the, the quarry, the Sawyer Road quarry. You're right. Possibly, but I've been getting several questions from residents about the amount of trucks and stuff on Fowler Road, and there's going to be an increased use there as well. So I did tell them I would bring it up. They saw this item on the agenda. Well, aren't those? I'm oh, sorry. Council McGinn. Aren't those issues for the planning board to determine when they issue the permit in the first place? Possibly. I think. I think that would be the appropriate process. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to refer this to the planning board. All those in favor? Seven, all opposed, none, it's unanimous. Okay, uh, the next item is Item number 30, it's a request from the trustees of Tom Thomas Memorial Library to amend some certain policies within the library policy manual. Uh, Mr. McGovern, would you care to comment? And we also have Jay Sherma, who's the library um, director. <laughs> Thank you. And the chair. And I blanked. I'm Hank sorry. Kinsley. Hank Kinsley. <laughs> I'm sorry. I blanked on your name. Uh, here to answer questions, or to would you care to? Talk about this? Well, it would be nice if Jay or the chair could make just a, an overall comment about um, the changes and what, what, what's the need for the change and how why you're proposing this. And how, you know. Jay told me he's here just for moral support. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice for the public to hear <laughs> the presentation. If you could just pull that mic up, that means the people in the audience can hear you a little better. Can I pull the mic up even though it says, please do not adjust? <laughs> Uh, we met with Library Director Jay Sherma, and uh, there was also input from the Children's Librarian, Rachel, and uh, we made some subtle changes to the policy. I think it hadn't been uh, amended in about five years. Uh, to the circulation policy, as well as uh, the personnel policy and some of the other uh, policies in the uh, policy manual. Um, Again, we felt that, that they were all relatively subtle changes. We changed some wording. Uh, there were a few things we did, as, such as uh, increasing a non-resident uh, library fee to try to keep it consistent with the cost to town residents. Um, there were some changes to uh, the borrowing limits on videos, uh, late fees on videos, and things like that. Okay, thank you. Um, Jay, do you have anything that you want to add? I, I, would just, I would just comment that in general terms, the proposals before you are essentially a uh, Essentially, they bring the policy manual up to date uh, to address uh, those matters which, since the original policy man, uh, manual was put in place,
Excuse me. Just for the sake of our audience, could you, uh, out in TV land, would you mind coming to the podium? I'm sorry, I forgot to remind you. Um, as I said, uh, in essence, we're, we're just trying to clean up things and, and to formalize um, the procedures that, and the decisions leading to those procedures that have uh, come into place as policy um, to assure that the collection has maximum usability uh, in, in, the, in the town. Um, I think another substantive change is the way in which we have moved the use policy uh, into the use policy, uh, all of the policies surrounding computers. That way they're all located in one location and it's easy, easier for a citizen, should they wish to, to verify what the town's policies are regarding the use of computers in libraries, to go to one place rather than have to read in three or four different locations. Um, okay. So. Thank you. Thank Don't you. go away. I, I see a question. <laughs> uh, yes, question, Councilor Roberts. Jay, I had noticed uh, one thing in the personnel policy that I get a couple of questions on that, I guess. One was that uh, the mileage, you had a dollar percentage per mile. I was wondering why you didn't just put in the federal reimbursement rate rather than having to change it on a, every time that changes, which can be every six months. And the other question was some of the personnel change and the personnel part of it, is that being consistent with what's happening with the rest of the employees and the personnel policy as a whole? I think that there, well, first of all, to, to answer your first question, um, I think we simply specified because that was what the rate was at the time. Um, certainly, I don't personally have objection to, and nor do I think the trustees would have objection to indexing. Uh, the mileage reimbursement. Uh, we were simply working from what the current figure was that the manager gave me at the time that the policy revision was suggested. Um, secondly, the, the, the broader context of the question, um, I would suggest that what the personnel policy does for the library is amplify and clarify for the library those items that either are unaddressed in the town personnel policy uh, that were unaddressed at the time. For instance, there's a very sizable section of the personnel policy for the library that deals with the use of electronic resources by staff. At the time that policy was written, there was no comparable uh, issue within the town's policy. Uh, and when the policy manual was first written, several years ago, we regarded that as being a fundamental um, omission, um, especially in a facility which, remember at the time, the library probably carried more computers and computer accessibility than any other town department. Um, the town manager pointed out to me in a recent phone conversation that there is one glaring um, variance from town policy uh, as I said to him, I'm really somewhat surprised that it, it made it past my editorial uh, eye. Um, and that is that currently the way the policy is stated, um, the library director is given direct hire authority. Uh, that's, that is at variance, direct hire authority. That is at variance with town policy. Um, as I said to the manager at the time, I have no problem with amending that um, phraseology to, incl uh, to include a phrase uh, something like subject to the final approval of the town manager. Um, there are some clarifications. Um, I believe the policy addresses um, an aggregate average of 15 hours. Um, that was included within the policy because the town's personnel policy simply speaks of a 15-hour part-time threshold. What tends to happen in the library because of summer hour variances is that somebody who um, may be working on a regular and permanent basis 20, 24 hours during the course of the uh, winter months 
uh, with Saturday closings dropped below that 15-hour threshold in the summer. And the, uh, their benefits, uh, which it would include simply a proration of, of vacation time, uh, became jeopardized. So we simply attempted to clarify that particular matter. Um, at the time that they were written, uh, I believe the town policy didn't address jury duty, so we included it within our policy. And uh, to answer a question that I understand is out there, um, when the personnel policy was first put together, it was a deliberate attempt, um, again for clarity, to piggyback on the enumeration schedule or scheme of the town's personnel policy, so that one, in fact, dovetailed into the other. Uh, and was seen as a refinement. And if you note, there's a scope note at the beginning of that personnel policy, which then specifies that that's what the purpose of that is, is to clarify and, and to um, make um, more comprehensible to somebody working in the library how it fits with the town's policy in general. Mr. McGovern and then Councilman Rich. Other than the personnel policy, I had no concerns with any of this. I've had discussions with Jay as well as with Rachel uh, Stamieskin, uh, the past chair of the trustees, about a number of concerns with the personnel policy. I, I don't like the way it piggybacks over the personnel code because it causes confusion in terms of uh, what's part of the regular personnel code and what's the separate library edition. As I mentioned, the as Jay mentioned, the hiring authority and all other departments. Uh, the manager, although he doesn't get involved in all the hirings, he does have the final check on it to be sure that uh, the department's fully aware of some of the, the different provisions in our, our personnel policies. Uh, also, in the conversation with uh, Rachel Stamieskin today, you know, I think th there was a good suggestion that there were a few provisos in here uh, that might be best to be in the personnel code for all the all departments, i.e. jury duty, which right now is only addressed in the, the personnel labor contracts, but not in the personnel code. And I think the issue that Councillor Roberts brought up about mileage, uh, you know, if we're going to have a mileage policy, it might be in the, that's in the personnel code, it ought to be in, in the full personnel code. Uh, up to this point, it's simply been an, an administrative uh, piece of paper that occasionally we change. And, but if you want in the personnel code, it, it, so be it. Uh, and, and there's also, Jay and I have not discussed this, but the personnel code defines a full-time employee as anyone working 35 hours or more, and this defines it as working 40 hours or more, which is extremely problematic. Uh, so I, I would strongly urge the council to take whatever action you want on the balance, but to return the personnel policy portion uh, to refer it back to the manager to uh, work on in consultation with the uh, department heads uh, in the library trustees. Council uh, Well, uh, town manager, I guess, has hit on my main concern, which was to have separate personnel policies for different departments. I find that very unusual and could not support that. I was also concerned with some of the terminology, for instance, permanent full-time employees and permanent part-time employees, which I think creates a different expectation about a position um, than I would be uh, comfortable with. So I would support um, everything that has been proposed by the trustees except for the personnel policy, which I'm very uncomfortable with. Um, I do have a couple of questions as well um, of Jay. The first is on the fee for summer residents, does that apply to summer residents who are also taxpayers? No. For instance, own a home? No. Okay. No. Great. And uh, then on the use of the libraries by minors, you said you're bringing all library material into that. Does that apply to computer access as well? Use of library material. You would have to clarify that question. I'm not I'm not following you. 
Um, the section on use of library by minors, does that include a minor's use of internet access? Yes. It does. Okay. Um, does the library have any filters for the children's room? Yes. On computers? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Jay? Do I hear a motion? <laughs> Councilor Carson. Yes, uh, I move that the town council accept the proposed policy changes within the library policy manual with the exception of the personnel manual which I then recommend to the town manager to, with, the, with the director of the library to rework in the areas of our concern. Second. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any <clears throat> further questions or discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the question. All those in favor? Seven, none opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Duplicates or not. I guess maybe I did. We have the next item, which is item number 31, adoption of annual town council goals. Every year the uh, council puts together a set of goals. We'll try to keep it to a page or two. We have seven goals this year. And uh, we discussed these in a workshop previously, and they've been amended, and we've all talked about them. But um, we have time to talk about them again if we need to. But do I hear any sort of motion? That's it. <laughs> Councilor Carson. Yes, Madam Chairman. I propose that we accept the town council goals as we have reviewed them and as enclosed in that packet. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Councillor Lynch. I'd like to suggest in that they're not all that long that we do read them mm. for people who may be at home watching. I was going to suggest meeting. we put it on the website. So either way. It is on the website, <laughs> I think, yeah. Is it on the web? Yeah. Is it on the it? website? I believe so. Didn't you put that I, I'm not sure. They have been in the past. I'm yeah. not sure about this year's version since we hadn't adopted them yet. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a good idea. Um, and I, I will read them. Um, Cape Elizabeth Town Council goals, July 1st, 2001 through June 30th, 2002. Number one, ensure that quality services and programs are maintained with as minimal impact as possible on the property tax rate. And there are some bullets underneath this bullet. Continue quarterly reviews of expenditures and revenues by the Finance Committee. Bullet. Coordinate with other communities to communicate to state decision makers the importance of maintaining appropriate state school subsidies and responsible county government. Gain long-term support from the state for schools. Bullet. Communicate to the Cumberland County Commissioners and to other cities and towns the need to restrain future growth of the county budget. Bullet. Review and use as a resource staff prepared in depth analyses of the town's paving program, recycling activities, spring and fall cleanup weeks, rescue services, and library programs. Bullet. Complete the public safety building project within budget. Number two, increase opportunities for interaction of the town council with boards and commissions. Bullet. Conduct an annual orientation for all board and commission members. Bullet, participate in two joint workshops with the town planning board, including one workshop to review protection efforts for the town's special places as outlined in the comprehensive plan. Bullet, each board and commission shall have at least one meeting attended by a council member. Bullet, the council chair and the ordinance committee chair shall meet at least twice this year with the planning board, zoning board of appeals, and conservation commission chairs. Bullet. Review with the Fort Williams Advisory Commission the efforts undertaken to preserve the historic aspects of Fort Williams Park. Number three. Adopt a specific plan for the Pond Cove Millwork property. Number four. In cooperation with interested parties and other property owners, develop a master site and landscape plan for the town hall lot and adjoining lots. Number five. Prepare with full public dialogue an implementation plan for the town greenbelt plan 
including a maintenance plan for the Greenbelt and for other town-owned conservation parcels. Number six, continue to enhance and promote the town's website, including additional opportunities for conducting transactions. Number seven, receive and review a report on road traffic safety in Cape Elizabeth that evaluates long-term needs for safety, estimates costs, and evaluates achieving a, quote, minimal loss of the town's rural character, unquote. And that quoted portion is from the comprehensive plan. So those are our goals. Do we have a motion? On the Do we have a motion? I believe so. Yes. And it's been seconded. Any further discussion or questions? No? Let's move the question. All in favor? I, I, oh, I'm sorry, Henry, did I cut you off? Well, I, I should have spoken, but the, the, the third bullet under the first uh, sec, communicate to the Cumberland County Commissioners and to other cities and towns the need to restrain future growth of the county budget. Uh, we went up about 12 percent, Falmouth went up about 15 percent, and other communities have gone up similar amounts. How are we proposing to do that? The county commissioners have uh, unbridled reign. Uh, is that the, the oxymoron? Uh, that is, uh, that they have uh, three votes for the whole county, and they're free to disregard the, the county budget uh, advisory committee. How does uh, little Cape Elizabeth, out of 27 towns and city, cities, uh, communicate and carry out this goal to keep the county uh, budget in line? Councilor McGinty? Like some thoughts. I, well, I think that's something that we need to sit down and, and brainstorm at a mm -hmm. workshop and sit down and see exactly how far we want to take this, whether we want to spearhead this ourselves or find other um, willing people, perhaps at the state level, um, other budget advisory committee members, or Council members, we know that um, the county budget every year at adoption generates some backlash from at least some of the communities. Mm -hmm. I think we need to work through that process a as, a, as a council. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just so the public knows, these are intended to be sort of top line goals. Um, all the specific action plans for each one of these um, are either being determined or um, will be determined this year. All the specifics. I didn't mean to delay the vote. Um, it's quite all right. Go ahead. All in favor? Seven. Opposed? Zero. Passes unanimously. Thank you. The next item is item number 32 a request to utilize Fort Williams Park for a lobster bake for the Military Order of the Purple Heart. <coughs> McGovern. Yes, this was unanimously approved by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, would note that they don't know the exact number. It could be as many as a thousand uh, individuals. Uh, it is on a Thursday from 12 noon to 7 p.m. during the day. Uh, they would be setting up a tent on the field adjacent to the lighthouse. Uh, unlike other activities that we have at the fort, the fort committee is recommending, if you noticed in their minutes, that we don't charge the, the fees we usually charge for this particular group. Uh, the Military Order of the Purple Heart is made up of uh, veterans who are injured in the line of duty. And for that reason, uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and the, the military history of the park felt it would be inappropriate uh, to charge them for the use of the facility. Uh, it is at a, at a very good time for us in terms of uh, it is a weekday during the day. Uh, is not expected to have too much impact on other park activities. Most everyone that comes in would come in by bus and uh, not individually driving. So again, uh, it, uh, it's going to be a nice activity to have here in Greater Portland, and they do hope to use Fort Williams for their lobster. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Do I hear a motion? I move acceptance of the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee to have the Military Order of the Purple Heart have their convention at Fort Williams Park. Second. Any further discussion or questions? No? All those in favor? Seven. Opposed? Zero. Passes unanimously. Our next item is item number 33. And this is a request to set a public hearing having to do with the Greenbelt Plan. Mr. McGovern, do you want to? 
Secretary the Secretary council had an excellent workshop on this uh, last Monday. Yes. Last Monday, and uh, you had a discussion, consensus at that point, if you'd like to have this on your agenda for the setting of a uh, public hearing next month. I would like to um, commend the Greenbelt Commission and their chair, Dan Chase, who did a great job um, working with us and with members of the planning board who were able to attend at this workshop. They uh, presented their plan very well, and it's obviously the uh, fine product of much work by the commission and the town owes them a great deal of thanks. Do I hear a motion? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll move the public hearing be set for Monday, September 10th. 2001 for the Conservation Commission's draft of the Greenbelt Plan. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No? All in favor? It's unanimous. Pretty controversial item. Our next item is item number 34, which is consideration of approval of the recommendation of the Community Center Planning Committee to use SMRT as the architect engineers for the community center project. Mr. McGovern. I'll, I'll give an uh, introduction to this, and Gilbert Jordan, the Ralph D. Gould Award recipient and <laughs> chairman of the committee, is also <laughs> present in the back of the room waiting to, to leave from the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to leave. Uh, is, I indicated in an email to you about three weeks ago uh, the, the committee under uh, Gilbert Jordan's leadership voted unanimously to recommend the hiring of SMRT. They interviewed, spent an entire day interviewing uh, three firms. It was interesting. I think there were 11 or so folks there as part of the interview board, probably the most I've ever seen as any part of interview board in Cape Elizabeth. Councilors Fritz and McGinty served on that committee. The two school board members were there. The two students were there, a number of citizen members, and a couple of staff members as well. Uh, the specifics of the contract are that it would be 10% of the construction costs, and there was also uh, $10,000 for miscellaneous charges, including uh, the surveying, excuse me, uh, and the permitting process uh, for the property. The committee met last week, had a good meeting. There's a lot of discussion on as to what the amount of the project will be, the cost. Uh, there's no consensus on that yet, although the, they understand the Council's feelings on that issue. Uh, they've set a couple of subsequent meetings, uh, most important of which is that they've asked to have a workshop with the Council on September 25th at 7 p.m. Uh, that would, would be a joint workshop with the Community Center Planning Committee, the School Board, and the Town Council. The School Board uh, already had a workshop scheduled that evening. I received a message from the Superintendent today that, that they didn't have anything planned for that evening, and in fact, they this could be their primary topic that evening. So it works well with their schedule. It works with the Community Center Planning Committee. It works with SMRT, and I hope also it works uh, with uh, the council. And uh, excuse me, that, that was what date? September 25th. My birthday. And it is the desire of the council chairman, she's indicated to me when I ran this date by her at the end of last week, uh, that you receive some advanced material before that meeting. and. Uh, with Gilly will communicate that to SMRT that, uh, you know, that I think you're scheduled to meet the week before that, Gilly? 18th, is it? Yes. Yeah. That, just, just so that it's, it's, I think it's helpful sometimes for us to get up to speed on what's going on if we have some material ahead of time as opposed to having everything passed out to us, if there is something passed out to us at the meeting, then sometimes it's sort of hard to absorb it all right on the spot. We, we did just have the first meeting with them, so, I mean, everything's very conceptual at this point. You know, they, they will be bringing something back to us, and then presumably we'll that disseminate that. Any, anything that you have, even at a high conceptual level, I think would be helpful to have. Well, by then, they should have something more substantial. Thank you. And, and I want to thank the Council for allowing some of the work to progress prior to this evening's vote. Uh, uh, it, so thus far, we've received one bill for $1,900. Uh, we haven't paid it yet, but uh, work has begun because of the, the need to get community services out of the school and into this building uh, next summer sometime. It was important to get work started. Thank you. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? 
Council McKenzie. I'll move approval uh, of the recommendation of the Community Center Planning Committee to utilize SMRT as the architect slash engineers for the proposed Community Center project. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any further discussion? No? All those in favor? Seven. It's unanimous approval. Great. Um, that concludes our regular list of items. Any citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda? Our last citizen is departing. I move. Congratulations, Gillis. I move we adjourn. Congratulations. Congratulations. Ted. I move we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? It's unanimous. It's unanimous. Also. Seven zero. We are. Adjourned. You're still on the air, so. Yes. <clears throat>